Saturday morning, we've got a slightly wounded Stig with his little bit of damage here, but where are we off to? We've got our nice smoke lights in there now. We are off to Shropshire. I think we'll have a Google on the way. We'll get George on Google. Morning, George. Um, and we'll have a look. We'll have a look what Shropshire famous for. That'll be our challenge. We're going to meet Adrian and we're going to go on a Green Lane tour that he's kindly invited us on. Um, so we'll go and have a look what's going there. We'll jump in the car, we'll get on the get it in the sat nav and see what's happening. What is it about these G Wagons? They're always giving us a hard time, aren't they, George? Yeah. They're always stalking us. But look, we're speeding. Oh shush 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 shush. But yeah, we're not gonna race. We're not gonna race, so we were bigger than that, aren't we, George? Yeah. Yeah. Right, we're on the way. What have we discovered, George, about Shropshire? It's apparently it's a big claim. It's the birthplace of industry, which I think is a big claim. Um it's kind to hedgehogs, that was a random one. And it's got the world's first skyscraper, apparently. So I'm a bit worried we're driving into an industrial landscape with skyscrapers, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. But there we go, that's what Google told us Shropshire was famous for. So we're, there we go, we're testing out the new GoPro on the windscreen. So we have got an old Defender behind us. You might be able to see it out the back window, although the spare wheel may obscure your view. We've got a Discovery 5 in front of us, so we're in a little mini convoy doing this track. So there's less people that would normally be on this tour because of COVID and it's just starting the season, I think. So Adrian's up in the front in a Disco 5, which, um, yeah, we're not sure we want to be looking at the back of a Disco 5 all day, are we, George? Well, uh, we don't mind looking in the rear view mirror at the old Defender behind us, but, um, so they, they've got road tires on, we've got all terrain, so, it's not too muddy at the minute, so we are just heading into the forest now. So as soon as we get into the forest, we'll get all the other GoPros on the outside. And we've got the new drone. Yeah. So we've got, we haven't gone on low range yet, have we, George? So we're just going through here, and we're just in, we've put the suspension up, um, but we're just in normal. I think we might go on low range in a minute. Put it in low range? Yeah, go on. Do that? How do I? Here? Yeah. Yeah. It might want us to go in neutral. It says stop safely to select low range. Alright. Stop. Select neutral. Alright, there you go. And then drive again. Low range, range selected. Here. Will it work? There we go. Yeah. So what does low range? So that puts it in lower a lower gear. So instead of being like one, two, three, we're like in quarter, half, and three quarter gears. So. Ah, okay. So it just gives us a bit more control. Makes it easier work for the engine. Right, so I've just selected low range and we're driving in low range, but the revs were quite high. It was like two and a half thousand, three thousand revs, which which felt uncomfortable. So I mean, so what I've done, I didn't know if you could do it, so I've tried. So I've pushed this over into sport mode, which seems ridiculous because we're in low ratio. And now what I can do, if I want to go up or down a gear, I can just push the gear stick. So it's showing us now we're in sport three. But that's not third gear, that's third gear in low ratio. So if I want to go down a gear, I can push it forward. And now you'll see I'm in S2. My revs have increased, so I can actually use the sport mode in low ratio and it feels a little more controlled. I'm quite happy with that. So that's a little bonus there. Probably, but we would get there. It's just stable, it's just a bit of forestry management. Right, so we're on the climb now, so you can see the Disco 5 in front. We're climbing up to the top of the ridge and we'll get the drone the drone out at the top. So annoyingly again, every time we stop, we've just stopped now for a chat. If you have a look, the terrain, George will show if you. I go here, it goes yeah. back to comfort. It goes back to comfort. You can't see it too well because we're kind of wobbling about, but we want to be in the muds and ruts, ruts. mode here. So I've, I've mentioned it and Land Rover are looking at it. We Right, we're going up the side of the hill now. So there's quite a drop off to the, as we go around the track, around this windy track up the side. But the Disco 5 is doing really well. The Disco 5 has got standard road tires on it. It hasn't even got all terrain tires. 
Oh, we got some sheeps. Oh, wow. Oh, there you go. Sheeps Perfect attack. Perfect timing. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the view as well. That is just crazy. Yeah, we got... Look at the drop there. Okay, look out the window. Look at that. Right, follow the sheeps. So yeah, we've got the off-road camera, we'll show you this. So obviously, the on if you have the on-road camera here, it starts telling you you're too close in the parking sensor. So you go to off-road mode, and then you get there. So you can see exactly at the front there, you can see what angle your wheels are over here. You can see- Especially if you go up here as well. If you press that, you can see properly what your wheels are doing in comparison to the ground. And also if there's a big rock or something on the track, you can steer yourself around it because you can't always see over your bonnet. Um, you should normally be okay, but it's kind of handy. Look at that view. Seriously, that is impressive. Yeah. And, we've, and we've still got the sheep. We've still got the sheep. They're guiding us up the mountain. Yes. Yes. What, George, question, what's more attractive? This is going to sound really weird. The back of a Disco 5 or the back of a sheep? <laughs> Uh, they're about equal to be honest. <laughs> I reckon. Neither of them really that attractive. No, but... neither of them a thing of beauty. No. sheep have uh, managed to make their way up successfully into a little spot there. Pretty clear route now and we can continue. I hope they're all safe up there. They managed to just run up here. Are we near the top now? I think so. The view is incredible. You ready? Yeah, right, let's try and launch the drone. See if we can... I don't know if you're supposed to launch them off your car bonnet. Oh, the slide. Oh, there we go. which is this circly bit here, this green thing here. And if you look here, we've got this green section. Now, if I move this up and down here, I can move that little arrow. Can you see it by the 10? It's going up there now. And that sets my speed for hill descent, I think. So we can regulate our speed of hill descent. So obviously you will slow down just naturally, but this has now set me quite fast, so I'm but the maximum you can set it is the top of that little green arc. 
Um, so if when you're using your car, if you feel like your car is just pulling you back all the time, you can change that. And it's quite cool actually, because it was a little bit slow. This this track's fine, we can, we can hurtle down here fine. Well, one interesting thing, we're playing with this hill descent. Now we're in auto at the moment, so this is pushed over this way. And I've got my terrain response set at about 10 miles an hour, but the gear it chooses itself is too low. So if I go over here into sport mode, you'll see it had me in S1. Let me just, all right, so if I, if I pull this and go into S2, S3, we've got the quad bike behind us now. And now it'll actually get up to the 10 and hold me in, it's holding me now at the 10. It's a bit so, shaky. It's a bit shaky, sorry about that. So it's a bit weird because you set what speed you want it to go, but it chooses a gear that's too slow for it. Let me let this quad bike go past. So, um, don't know about that. It almost seems a bit wrong because the, the hill descent is doing nothing because it's choosing a gear that's too low, if that makes any sense. So, we're going to have to ask some questions about that. Right, so we're in high ratio and I've got it set on the maximum and it'll hold it there. Um, in high ratio, the hill descent is more useful. In low ratio, it holds it back. So, I can go down now and I can slow it down 18, 17, 16. It'll do whatever I want it to do. But when it's in low ratio, the gears are holding it back and the hill descent doesn't seem to have any effect. It's like they haven't quite got the software right. They should take you up a gear in low ratio, not into high ratio, but up one of the higher gears so that your hill descent can be achieved. Um, discuss. Right, so with all this changing the gear manually and allowing us to do some cool things in terms of how, how how fast we want to go downhill and actually making the hill descent. I'm thinking, I want paddle shifts. I could do it all on the steering wheel then. So we've got to have a look at that. We'll have to whip this steering wheel off and have a look. And we've got the we've got the dongle now. We've got into the Pathfinder software. So I need to, I haven't actually been in it. I've got into it, but I haven't had a little snoop around. So we need to have a look around in there now and see if there is a paddle shift setting. Um, so that's one of the other jobs I've got to do amongst everything else. But right, let's carry on driving, George, and looking at some scenery. Right, one thing people were asking when we were in the off-road the other day, and we're not really in off-road today, was about the configurable terrain response. So this window we never looked in. So if I just look in here. All right, so what you need to do here is, basically you need to go into the to what, what would you call this? A terrain setting. Yep. And you need to go into the custom terrain config thing. I don't know why. I think it should be able to do that itself. But so, yeah, because it's just another menu. Why didn't it take you straight there? Yeah. It's in, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> an interesting point. Um, right, and basically this is the custom thing. So we can have differentials. And obviously we've only got the one um, central diff that we can control. So we've got automatic or limited slip um, powertrain so I guess this is how responsive the engine is uh, so we've got powertrain and then we've got steering how heavy we want the steering which is not really gonna help me a lot with terrain response I don't suppose and then traction control now this is something that could have been handy because when we were trying to get up those steps the other day and we it was like the wheels weren't spinning enough. As soon as they sensed a bit of spin, it was stopping power. And sometimes you want to give it a bit of and just churn up a bit of mud and hopefully throw you forward a bit. So I think we could have done more. And the other thing we've discovered that we could have done more was when we go back into the settings. So if you go into this screen, um, there was the low traction launch. Now this, when we were stuck in the mud, may have been the thing. So it's, you've got to confirm these things and then obviously then we could have tried that. So maybe we'll have to go back to a, to could, a slippy mud pool. Let's, yeah, we could do a video testing that. Testing that again. So that's another thing we've got to go. So we're still learning. We are not experts on this Land Rover, the terrain response system and everything. We're just trying to use it as we find. And when we get stuck, we'll try and use extra bits. But we've learned the, the, um, a bit of the configurable terrain response today and the hill descent and stuff. So. Right, let's crack on. Right, well, we've just stopped, had a cup of tea, stopped at the pub here by the by the river, which is very nice, and we're off. We're gonna go and do some, through some open fields now, so let's have a look. Right, 
Right, we're on the second part of the day out, and we're sort of going along some different tracks, and we've just met an old school series Land Rover coming the other way. He's pulled it over to the side. Good old boy. Oh, Rudd, look, Rudd blocked. Always oh, starting to have a chat. Oh, look at the little dog. The little dog hanging out oh. the window. Yeah, so this is quite different. It's a sort of stony track. Yeah. Um, different sort, a bit more art axle articulation in this one. That was fairly easy. It's fairly easy. That's all right. Where are we going now? So we're on muds and ruts. We've got the suspension raised again. We're not in low ratio yet. I don't think we need to be in low ratio. It seems to be coping fine. The defender just finds it really easy. Like it's, it's, it's not particularly a challenge. Come to open air up here. It's gone less stony. Yeah. Ooh, or are we? I don't know. Almost in a forest. Keep out there. No public access. Might have some views over that side. A bit hard to see, but yeah, there's some very nice views through there. Whoa! Oh wow, this is already a change. Yeah, this is proper muds and ruts already. Right. Yeah, we're in muds and ruts. There we go. Mm -hmm. oh. Where's the old defender behind us, George? Is he keeping up? We lost him. No. I didn't. <laughs> Oopsie, we've lost. Oopsie, we've lost our buddy. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. Right, onwards and upwards. <laughs> right, there we go, that's the end of our day. We're nearly home now, so that was 10 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock doing various country lanes. We stopped, had a cup of tea, stopped wherever we wanted. Um, that's a good day out. It's not aggressive off-road. Obviously, it was fairly tame for us. It could be worse depending on the weather. If there'd been a lot of rain, it might have been a bit more fun in terms of fun, slippy fun. But as you saw, there was a standard Discovery 5 there with standard road tyres, factory. We've got the all-terrain tyres. There was an old Defender. So I'd recommend that for anyone, especially with these strange COVID times. It's a day out. You can socially distance. You can enjoy your vehicle. You can enjoy some countryside. So thank you, Adrian, for inviting us. And thank you, Mike, for helping out. Um, yeah, I'll put the link below, so if anyone wants to book that tour, um, they run those tours, they can accommodate different numbers of people. At the moment, they're trying to limit it to six in total because of COVID restrictions, but I'm sure they'll be over soon. Um, I'll put up some GoPro footage from the tour next. We'll speed it up a little bit so you can see us going along. But there we go, another fun day in our Defender.